Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. From October 28th through November 4th, Flipside Gaming is holding their Halloween sale. During this time, when you use the promo code HEROES, you will receive 15% off all orders over $10 instead of the usual 10%. Remember though, to support the channel, you must enter the HEROES promo code to replace the default one like you see on the screen. Also, they now have pre-orders open for Theros Beyond Death Draft and collect your booster boxes while supplies last. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Much like last week, Pioneer is going to be the main driver this week for price increases. You're going to see a lot of cards moving this week due to that new format. And it makes sense. This past week, people actually got a chance to sit down on Magic the Gathering Online, play with these decks, play with these cards, and now players are starting to figure out which ones are the best. So in some cases, you see some very different cards going up in value this week. There's other factors out there contributing to price increases and decreases as well, which we'll talk about as we go through today's video. But remember, this week the main one is Pioneer. Quickly before we get started though, fast reminder, the Halloween sale is still going on at FlipSideGaming.com through Monday, November 4th. If you use the Heroes promo code during that time period, you will get 15% off any order over $10 instead of 10%. But remember, you do have to put the Heroes promo code in to overwrite the default one to support the channel, which of course is always appreciated. Also, if you're looking for Theros Beyond Death pre-order opportunities, they do have booster boxes there for not only collector boosters, but also draft boosters. So you might be able to save some cash on one of those if that's what you're looking for right now. Without any further ado, though, let's get into it. We're going to begin with standard, as we always do. This time, we're going to look at the top nine standard legal cards that have lost value this week. I know a lot of times I'll just say top five and then we'll do some honorable mentions, but I think that can get confusing even for me when I'm doing my numbering. So we're just going to do top nine today. Number nine is Hydroid Crisis, down 88 cents to $30.63. Currently, it continues to be a standard all-star. Saltai mid-range decks are running this, which are very popular right now, because they run Oko, but they also have a lot of ways to take out the opponent's Oko, which is pretty much the name of the game when it comes to standard right now. This is also found in the food ramp decks right now, like Simic and Bant. There's also a Tulane version of a ramp deck going around out there as well that's not doing that bad. Now, when it comes to Pioneer, this is seeing play early on there, too. Simic Ramp and more are using this. He's a little modern play too, but the reason it is losing value this week is because the price point is pretty high considering the number of cards out there in circulation right now. So it has been spiking pretty aggressively over the last few weeks. Not too surprising to see this retraction here. Number eight is Leyline of the Void. This is the original one from Guild Pack though. It goes down $1.03 to 2375. This card continues to be soft since it was reprinted in Corset 2020 as a rare. So a lot of copies are out there now. Also, as you remember, with Hogak, as well as Faithless Looting being banned in Modern, this is still a great Modern sideboard card, but it's not as critical as it once was. Also does see sideboard play, though, in Vintage and Legacy, but I do think it will come down a little more before it does stabilize. Number 7 is Shimmer Dragon, down $1.09 to 468 This was one of the more expensive Brawl exclusive cards, which can be found either in this case, the Fairy Schemes Brawl deck, or sometimes in Collector Boosters. Finally, it is coming down. There has been a promise of more of these Brawl decks getting into players' hands in November, so some of the more expensive cards are softening up like this one. Number six, Omnith, Locus of the Royal, goes down $1.13 to $6.12. This card isn't doing a whole lot right now in Standard. It is seeing a tad bit of modern play. There are these elemental decks out there. Usually they run like one copy of this in the main, but considering it's not seeing too much play in those formats, it is pretty soft right now. It is a good commander and Brawl card, though, if nothing else. Skeleton Archer comes in at number 5, down $1.14 to $0.78, cents, but this is the Corset 2020 copy. You can only find one copy of this in the Black Welcome deck. Now, there's five Welcome decks that they give out at game stores to new players. This can be found in the Black one. And the reason a lot of these cards have been inflated was just simply because you don't have a lot of people taking those decks apart and selling them online. Finally, this card and a number of the others are becoming a little less inflated, so that's good to see, if nothing else. Number four is Kenrith, the Return King, down $1.49 to $11.21. Now, this is the non-foil copy of the card, so it's not the buy box promo we're looking at today. This is the one you might find in Collector Boosters. Now, this card has seen a fair amount of standard play so far. Initially, in the lands decks, obviously, those aren't really around anymore because of the banning of Field of the Dead. But even more recently, this is still showing up in the Jeskai Fires builds. It's a great place to put your mana if you're not going to need your mana to cast your spells. This is also a very good commander card, and I have seen a lot of people building around it there too. 
Number three is Alila Artful Provocateur down at $1.54 to $9.49. This is not the foil version from the Brawl deck, but the non-foil that you might find in collector boosters this week. And it is losing value. It's a card that a lot of people wanted to build around in Commander. That's why it got as high as it did. But again, with the promise of more of these decks hitting stores soon, a lot of these bigger cards have softened up quite a bit. Number two is Questing Beast, down $384 to $30.76. This card has been spiking aggressively for a few weeks now. Leading into Mythic Championship number five, it looked like it was going to be a major player, and it truly was. The TV time the card got led to a big spike last week, as a matter of fact. So now we are seeing some normalization, and that's not unexpected. I'm sure it will come down more before it stabilizes, but it is still seeing a ton of play. In standard, you're going to find this in Saltai Midrange, Ramp Builds, Adventure Builds, Gruel Aggro, Teamer Reclamation, and more. Modern, this will show up sometimes in like Teamer Snow, sees a little Legacy and Vintage play, and yes, even some early Pioneer play in Golgari Midrange. Number one, Oko Thief of Crowns goes down 883 to 4749. Okay, so much like the previous card, this spiked wildly over the last couple weeks. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Oko has been everywhere. This card has completely taken over standard. It's gotten to the point where basically you're playing Oko and you're preparing for other decks playing Oko as far as actually putting things like Noxious Grasp in your main deck. It's gotten that overwhelming. Now, even outside of standard, this is seeing play in early pioneer builds, doing really well there, seeing a lot of modern play, seeing play in legacy, vintage, commander, oathbreaker, the card is everywhere. So we have mythic championship number six coming up in a couple weeks. November 18th, after that event is over, they are going to update the banned and restricted list again. And the writing is on the wall that there's a very, very, very good chance that this is going to be banned, at least in standard, maybe pioneer. Maybe even modern, depending on how that goes the next few weeks. But what you're seeing here is not just your typical normalization. It's also people preparing for that possibility. And that's why this card stands to lose more value before all is said and done. And if it does get banned in multiple formats, it could lose a lot of value after that point, too. Now, as of today, like I said, this thing is all over standard basically everywhere you look. When it comes to modern, Amulet Titan, which of course is a very powerful deck right now, Urza Ascendancy, Urza Outcome, Urza Thopter Sword, the four color variation, and now the new Simic build. Basically, the Simic build has been doing amazing because of this card. In fact, has been playing it and more there. When it comes to Pioneer, this is in Dreadless Dredge, Banned Spirits, Copycat Combo, Etherworks Marvel Energy, and more. Okay, now let's look at cards gaining value that are standard legal. We're going to look at the top seven today. Number seven, Leyline of Abundance, up $1.37 to $2.71. Now, this one isn't moving because of standard as much as it is moving because of Pioneer. This is showing up in a number of ramp decks in the format. Number six is Vivian Arcbow Ranger up $1.43 to $7.90. This card looked amazing at Mythic Championship number five. Because of that, it was increasing quite heavily last week. Still increases a little more this week. I do think pretty soon you'll see a little bit of retraction. But it is seeing play right now in some big decks in standard. Jund Adventures, Simic Food Ramp. And also Pioneer, Mono Green Ramp, and more are playing it there. Number five is Absorb. This is the one from Invasion, though, the original one, going up $1.55 to $8.27. Now, this is seeing a tad bit of standard play, not a whole ton right now, not really seeing much modern play. But Pioneer control decks are running this with more and more frequency, it seems. So this is one to watch, especially the original copy, which obviously is going to be a little bit harder to find in good condition. Number four, one more welcome deck card. It is Woodland Mystic up 235 to 629. But this one's a little different than the one we looked at earlier. You can only find one copy of this in the green welcome deck. However, this is a brand new magic card. It's never been printed before. And even though it's not an amazing card, if you compare it to say Llanowar Elves or something like that, it is a card that some commander players may want as a redundancy. And this is the only place to get it. I wouldn't recommend paying this price for it though. Wait for it to come down if you want one. Number three, the Royal Scions go up 297 to 1302. This card is slowly seeing more modern play, so pay attention to it. When it comes to standard, it is seeing a little play there sometimes in Super Friends builds. But in modern, you're going to find this now in Grixis Death Shadow a lot of the time. Is it Control, Team or Snow, and a number of other decks? It has seen a little legacy play too, and in Pioneer, it's in a build that's actually shaping up to be one of the early popular ones. Is it Phoenix? Number two is Vraska Golgari Queen up 361 to 1774. Okay, basically, like I alluded to earlier, Oko is just such a force in standard right now. The Saltai midrange decks are the most played deck, and that's because they can play Oko, but they can also play this, they can play Noxious Grasp, 
basically everybody's just prepared for an Oko mirror at this point. So, of course, this is seeing a ton of standard play. It started to go up a little bit last week, goes up a lot more this week. Although, I have noticed over the last 48 hours or so, it is cooling a little as people, again, are coming to terms with Oko will most likely be leaving the standard format on November 18th. But what about other formats? Modern, this is seeing a little bit of play now, sometimes in gen decks, sometimes in some other builds. Partially because Oko is in quite a few places there too. Pioneer, another place where Oko is legal. This is seeing play in Saltite Control, Golgari Midrange. So as long as Oko's around in some formats, this card will probably have a home. Although I would expect it to lose a fair amount of value if it does get banned, at least in standard. More value if it gets banned in other places too. Now another place where this is seeing more play is definitely Brawl. And that again could be a response to Oko there too. Number one, Arclight Phoenix goes up 597 to 1827. Okay, the card that has been around for a long time. It was very popular, so popular that a copy of it was in the Arcane Tempo Challenger deck not too long ago, forcing more copies into the marketplace. But even so, it's going up quite a bit this week. Is it because of standard? Mm, not really. It has seen a little bit of standard play in this new sort of blue dredgeless dredge version of Is It Phoenix, but that deck didn't put up any really big results this week. This is actually going up because of Pioneer. Is it Phoenix and Pioneer? It looks like it could be pretty good. Okay, speaking of Pioneer, let's move on to the top six Pioneer legal cards that, of course, are not standard legal that have lost value this week. You're going to see a lot of cards that spiked last week that are starting to normalize a little bit. Some of them, maybe people are coming to grips with the fact that they're not going to be as good as they thought they could have been. In other cases, it's just simply there's a lot of copies of these cards out there. So people have these in binders and boxes. And when they see these big spikes happening, if they don't want to play that particular Pioneer deck, guess what? They're going to sell. They're going to trade. A lot more cards will quickly enter the marketplace. So in some cases, you'll see some of these big spikes walk back at least a little bit. Number six is Torrential Gear Hulk down $1.01 to ten forty-five. dollars Sees a little bit of modern control play. Definitely going to see Pioneer control play going forward. But because of the big spike last week, it does come down a little. Number five, Deathrite Shaman from Return to Ravnica goes down $1.35 to seven ninety-nine. dollars This is the easiest copy to find in good condition. The other two copies we talked about last week that spiked are holding a little more steady, but this one is already rescinding a little bit. Now, another reason for this could be that Wizards did make an announcement this week that they are going to do banned and restricted list updates for Pioneer every Monday, at least for a while. That way they can kind of keep up with any degenerate stuff that could happen in the metagame. Some people are afraid this is a powerful card that could get banned. I mean, it's already been banned in Modern and Legacy. However, there's no fetch lands in this format, so maybe it's not going to be as strong. I guess time will tell. But so far, it does look pretty good in early gameplay. Golgari Delirium, as well as the Chromantic Core Soulfire decks are running this. And those decks are looking really good early on. Number four is Crucible of Worlds. This is the original, though, from Fifth Dawn, down $1.73 to twenty-five forty-nine. And, of course, we know what this card does in Modern. Shows up in a lot of Tron builds, usually like a one-of in the sideboard. This will see some vintage play, too. But I will say it is seeing less play than maybe a few months ago because of some meta changes. It's a great casual card. That will always be true. And it does have some pioneer potential. I haven't seen a lot of big decks trying to use this yet. I've seen a few brews here or there. And who knows, at some point down the road, there could be a pioneer deck very interested in this. Number three is Grim Flyer, down $1.88 to fifteen forty-four. Another card that spiked pretty aggressively last week. This was one of the earliest spikes as it almost felt like low-hanging fruit. People remembered how good it was when it was in standard, and they automatically started thinking about Pioneer builds. And some of those Pioneer builds still look good. Saltite Control, Golgari Midrange, Golgari Delirium, Obzon Midrange, and more. Keep an eye on this one. We'll have to kind of see how this plays out in the coming weeks. Number two, there he is, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, coming down this week, 355 to 3397. Huge spike last week. Again, you have a card that is fresh in people's minds. Everyone remembers how good it was in Standard recently. And it's good in Modern 2 and Control Builds, so stands to reason should be good in Pioneer Control Builds, and I have no doubt it will be. But because of the aggressive spiking, you do see some retraction this week. And number one is Mox Amber, down 449 to 2490. Now, this one is moving probably more because of Modern than anything. Yes, there are some Pioneer decks running this, like Kethis Combo and Emery Ascendancy. We'll have to see how they do. But the reason this spiked initially was really modern is people were preparing for Emery to come into the format, and then those Urza decks were supposed to really take off. And that kind of happened, but not in the way a lot of people thought it would. Urza Outcome was supposed to be the big deck running at least three copies of this, right? As time went on, though, 
It turned out that, mostly because of Oko, the Simic or Zathopter Sword deck is the one that has really taken off, and that doesn't always run this card. Sometimes it runs a copy here or there, though. Because of that, this does soften up a little bit, but I do think this is one of those cards that long-term is going to have value. It's going to have some ups and downs while it tries to figure out its role in both the modern and pioneer meta, and it could lose a little more value before it does stabilize, but a year or two down the road, I feel like this not only will recover, but will have more value attached to it. Okay, let's move on to the top 15 Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. So we did 30 last week. Things are coming down a little bit at least, but there's still a lot of cards moving. Number 15, Voice of Resurgence. Two copies I wanted to point out. Dragon's Maze up $1.45 to fourteen fourteen. Modern Masters 2017 up 235 to 1295 This card does see play sometimes in modern company builds, but it's really Pioneer obviously pushing this. You'll find this now in four-color Vanifar. Selesnia Tokens, Bant Midrange, Obzon Midrange, we'll have to kind of see again where the format lands. And when it comes to Commander, this has been kind of hot recently too, because of Gear Red Conclave Exile from the Primal Genesis Commander 2019 deck. This is a great upgrade to that deck, and also good if you just want to build completely around that Commander from scratch. Number 14 is Soul Flayer, up $2.45 to $3, pretty big percentage spike there. And like I mentioned earlier, this is part of those Chromantic Core Soul Flayer decks, and so far they look like they could be pretty good at the beginning of the Pioneer format. Number 13, Jace Vern's Prodigy, up 251 to 4699, had a huge spike last week, but people are really still focused on getting this card, having copies of this card, still going up a little more this week. We know that this is a decent modern card right now, and like Grixis Death Shadow builds and more there, but it's really all about Pioneer again this week. Is it Phoenix? Various control builds, Bank Company, Saltai Midrange, they're all running this card. Number 12, Dragonlord Ojitai goes up 258 this week to 805. Definitely looks like it's going to be a part of some control builds in Pioneer. There's more typical control builds running this. There's also a Jeskai Dragon control build, which looks pretty sweet. Number 11, Chandra Torch of Defiance up 258 to 1899. Sure, this sees some modern and legacy play, but that's not the name of the game this week. Again, say it with me now, it's all about Pioneer. Mono Red Torbran, Is It Phoenix, Burn, Boros Feather, they're all interested in this. Also too, Torbran, Thane of Redfell Commander decks have been pretty popular recently. So some of these cards showing up in these Pioneer decks are also getting a little cross interest from the Commander community. This is one of them. Number 10, Kalidus, Trader of Get, up 263 to $17. Yup, again, a card that sees a little modern play, but Pioneer, Golgari, and Sultai Midrange decks are already utilizing this card. Number 9, Master of Waves from Theros, goes up 271 to 634. One of the bigger developments this week when it comes to Pioneer decks has been the Mono Blue Devotion, or sometimes referred to as the Mono Blue Tempo deck. This is a deck that actually looks very strong, runs typically four copies of this card, and a lot of pros have been high on it. Andrea Manguchi did a video about the deck for Channel Fireball that brought more attention to it as well, and because of that, this card goes up quite a bit this week. Keep an eye on that deck, though. It definitely could be one of the better ones out of the gate. Number 8, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, going up 285 to 1874. Seize Modern Play in Elves and Teamer Tooth and Nail. Also a big commander card, especially for monocolor builds. Also, there were some Theros Beyond Death leaks this week, which confirmed Devotion would be a part of the gameplay there. But, you know what I'm going to say, this week it's all about Pioneer. Simic Ramp, Mono Black Vampires, Mono Green Ramp, and more are using this. Number 7, Tireless Tracker, goes up 287 to 1459. Again, a card that sees modern play, Amulet Titan, Jun, Titan Shift, Simic or Zathopter Sword, of course a very popular deck in that format right now, Jun Death Shadow and more, see some legacy play too. In Pioneer, so far it's showing up in things like Seasons Past, Dobbs on Midrange, and Golgari Delirium. Number 6, Sphinx's Revelation, Return to Ravnica, up 222 to 682, Modern Masters 2017, up 289 to 694. This hasn't seen a whole lot of modern play, but so far Pioneer control builds are pretty interested in it. Number five is Thing in the Ice, up 336 to 1313. Sees a little modern play and is a control, but in Pioneer, that is a Phoenix deck is usually running this, and there are some other builds that are interested in it there too. Number four, Hangerback Walker, goes up 362 to $12. Now this is a card that does see a fair amount of play in Modern. You'll find this in Eldrazi Tron, Hardened Scales, in Vintage, you'll see this in Ravager Shops. But again, Pioneer is driving the price this week. There's a Jeskai Ensel Artifact deck that runs this, also runs all that glitter, it's actually a pretty cool build. There's an Obzon Flash deck with this, Hardened Scales has this, Seasons Past, definitely going to see Pioneer play. 
Number three is Sylvan Karyatid. It goes up $5.76 to $9. This is already showing up in various ramp builds in Pioneer. Also in the Chromanticore Soulflayer builds. Bat Company 2 will run this. Copycat Super Friends and more. Number two, Liliana the Last Hope continues to go up quite a bit. $8.65 to $58.74. Last week I mentioned watch out for those Eldridge Moon cards. That set was a smaller set. It wasn't opened as much because drafters weren't opening it quite as frequently as a large set. Small sets usually sold less anyway. And it was sandwiched between a whole bunch of big magic sets, including Eternal Masters, which took a lot of people's money. So put it all together, and this card has another pretty big spike this week. Now, yes, it does already see modern play in like Death Shadow builds and such. Legacy, you will see play there too. In Pioneer, though, so far, Saltai and Esper Control have been interested. Abzan Midrange and more. Number one, Thassa, God of the Sea, goes up 1183 to 2481. Okay. So this is also moving because of that mono blue tempo deck I mentioned earlier. Typically, those builds are all running four of this. The Theros Beyond Death Leaks might have pushed this slightly too. Okay, let's move on to a format that is not quite as crazy right now, and that's modern. The top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number five is Savor the Moment. It goes down 214 to 1949. A few weeks back, LSV went on Magic the Gathering Online, went 5-0 and with this really cool Is It Taking Turns deck. It was running this, Mystic Sanctuary, Fire of Invention. That has not been repeated by anybody since then. So even though, yes, this card saw a pretty big spike not too long ago, I'm expecting it to lose a fair amount of value in the coming weeks, unless something changes. Number four, Surgical Extraction. This is the original one from New Phyrexia. It goes down 233 to 3550. Now, this is a card that is still a great sideboard card for Modern and sometimes Legacy, but it is soft right now because, much like Leyline of the Void, this one didn't get reprinted recently, but it's just not as critical in Modern as it was a few months back. When they banned Hogak and Faithless Looting in that format, this card did soften up and is continuing to stay soft, at least for the time being. Number three is Scalding Tarn from Modern Masters 2017, this time down 257 to 8423. Fetch lands are going to be hot. Even though this one has been soft recently, again, the main reason is because of meta changes in Modern after that banning of Hogak and Faithless Looting. But don't forget, at the end of the day, this is a fetch land. It's going to see Modern play. It's going to see Legacy play. It's going to see Vintage play. It's going to see playing Commander. There's always going to be an audience for it. Maybe it loses a little more value before it stabilizes. But then it's going to start creeping up again until someday we get a reprint in some product somewhere. Number two, Urza Lord High Artificer, stabilizing a little bit, down 373 to 3999. This card has been pretty aggressive when it comes to spikes in the past, and there have been a lot of Modern Horizons cards in circulation, so it's not too shocking to see it go down a little bit. I don't know if I would have thought it would have gone down this much this particular week, though, because it looked really good in Modern last weekend. Not only are the four color versions of Urza Thopter Sword still doing well, but that Simic Urza Thopter Sword deck looked like it was everywhere last week. Now, granted, Maybe some people are hedging their bets that perhaps Oko could get banned in Modern 2. That could soften up this card a little bit. Urza Outcome, though, could still be a very good deck, especially if the Simic variety of the Urza Thopter Sword deck happens to go away. Then maybe some of those players would just move over to Outcome. I would keep an eye on this. It could drop a little more, but regardless, at this price, it does not feel like a bad pickup. Number one is Mox Opal. Scars of Mirrodin down 363 to 106.99. Modern Masters 2015 down 411 to 105. So I said this a few weeks back. This card spikes aggressively sometimes, but it always seems to come back to the $105 mark. That almost feels like the ceiling for this card, at least for the short term. Now, if it doesn't get a reprint somewhere and more time goes on, perhaps it could hold more value more consistently. But I do feel like this is kind of where the card's going to sit with some ups and downs. With that being said, though, this card is everywhere in Modern. Four Color, there's a Thopter Sword, the Simic, there's a Thopter Sword, Deck, there's a Outcome, Affinity, Hardened Scales, and more. Legacy, Ad Nauseam, Tendrils, and more decks there. Vintage, Paradoxical Outcome. This will always be a very sought-after card. Okay, let's move on to the top six Modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Number six is Tarmogoy, from 94 cents to 5209. This is the one from Modern Masters 2015, and I say this every week, but these Goyfs are trying to find their price point. Still see a ton of play in Modern right now. Jun, Death Shadow Builds, Snow Builds, Ops on Stoneblade, a little Legacy play in like Teamer Delver and more there. Sees Vintage play too. But right now you are seeing some price movement back and forth as people are trying to figure out what the right price point is considering all the metas now. 
Number five is Omnith Locus of Mana, up $1.06 to $20.89. This is from Worldwake. And this is one we haven't really seen on the Market Watch in a while. Now, I think the main reason for this movement, though, is Commander, not necessarily Modern. Recently, with the Corset 2020 Elementals coming out, I think there were more people interested in playing decks with this, Locus of the Royal, and also a lot of the other Elementals that came out in that set. The Great Henge and Castle Garenbrig, I think, also continue to push green as one of the dominant colors in Commander right now. So if you weren't a green Commander player before, you might be one now, and I do think it is driving more traffic to cards like this. Number four is Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Rise of the Eldrazi. It goes up $1.53 to $32.09. Now this sees a little legacy play sometimes in 12 posts, but it is a great commander card for those colorless Eldrazi big mana builds. Number three is Jace the Mind Sculptor. This time we're looking at the Masters 25 one, and this time it's going up $1.80 to $129.95. Much like the Goyfs, the Jaces are also trying to find their price point in this new meta. One of the big things that changed the price of this card was the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic recently in Modern. That caused all the Jaces to spike. Now that the hype has died down and people have figured out where these cards are good, they have normalized for the most part. You will see some movement here or there, but they are settling down now, maybe closer to about the $130 mark. Now, this card is definitely seeing more play in Modern since the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic. Not only does it continue to see play in the regular control builds, but it also shows up now in the Stoneblade builds too. Number two is Azusa, Lost But Seeking. This is the one from Masters 25 as well. It goes up 283 to 3299. Amulet Titan is a very popular, very successful modern deck right now, and that's driving the price more than anything. This is a decent commander card though, too. Number one, Kinsbale Cavalier. This is the one from Dual Decks, Knights vs. Dragons. It goes up 317 to 1450. This card has been very hot recently because of Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, which is one of the Brawl Commanders but a lot of people are taking that card and building Commander Knight builds around it. And this is one of those key cards that you want to include in those decks. On to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Vintage, Legacy, 93, 94, and also cards that are important to collectors. We're going to begin with a dual land, not the last one you'll see today. Underground Sea, this is the one from Revised. It goes up $7 to $521.86. Of course, this is on the reserve list. Fork from Unlimited. Now, a lot of Unlimited cards have been pretty hot, partially because of 9394, also partially because collectors are trying to get them, because a lot of people are priced out of the alpha and beta copies now. But Fork goes up this week, 1348 to 128.34. And this card has been reprinted one more time after this and revised, but it is on the reserve list. Tropical Island from Revised goes up 1879 to 298, also on the reserve list. Mox Diamond from Stronghold. Now this is on the reserve list, but it did get reprinted in From the Vault Relics as a foil with new art before they closed that loophole in the reserve list. It goes up $28.54 this week to $291.96, and this does see play in Commander as well as Legacy and Vintage. Pyramids go up a little more this week, $3205 to $300. This originally was a buyout. Then the price started to come down a little bit, so I'm not sure if this was like another round of the buyout or if people started seeing the price go down and they thought this is my chance maybe to get one before it starts to inflate again. Either way, it continues to rise this week. I do think it will retract a little soon, though. This one is also on the reserve list. The Venerals Disc from Unlimited. This is actually not on the reserve list. Go figure. It goes up $36.72 to $189.99. And again, we have another card from Unlimited that is heating up. Birds of Paradise, also from Unlimited, goes up $40.24 to $319.50. Clearly, a lot of these are going up, like I said earlier, because they're good 93, 94 cards. This is a perfect example of that. But no matter how you look at it, these key unlimited cards just keep going up and up. Okay, here's an unlimited dual land plateau up 64.50 to 470. And of course, this is on the reserve list. It did get reprinted in revised, but actually had different art there. Tundra from Unlimited, also on the reserve list, but reprinted in revised. It goes up 97.94 to 647.50. Mox Sapphire from Unlimited goes up $354.01 to $3,064.99. And yes, this is on the reserve list, of course. Time for the Commander Spotlight. Now we're going to see some cards going up because of Commander. We're also going to see some cards probably really moving because of Pioneer, but they also happen to be very strong Commander cards too. Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth is a good example of that. It goes up a dollar to $19.33. This is the one from Ultimate Masters. Now, this is fantastic in Commander. Recently, it's been popular because of Carrick's son of Yawgmoth builds. This also sees more modern play now in Golgari Yawgmoth Cord. Also sees Legacy and Vintage play. 
But I really think Pioneer is pushing this one. It's in Mono Black Vampires and Chromantic Core Soul Flyer. River Bear from Portal Second Age goes up $1.03 to five seventy eight. Recently, when Modern Horizons came out, many of these harder-to-find bears started spiking because of Aula, Queen Among Bears, that was in that set. A lot of folks were trying to build bear commander decks. And this is a card that went up quite a bit, then it started to come down. This week, it's starting to creep up again. Keep an eye on these bears. I think there's always going to be some interest around them. But because this is from Portal Second Age, it could just be that this card is getting harder and harder to find generally in good condition. Rampaging Ferocidon up $1.04 to five twenty one. Okay, so this one is probably moving more because of Pioneer. The reason I put it here is because recently those Torbranthane of Redfell commander builds have been popular, and this is in many of those. But in Pioneer, you're going to find this in Burn, Mono Red Aggro, Atarka Red, and more. Temporal Manipulation goes up $1.08 to $40.06. Now, this is the one from Portal Second Age, so again, a little harder to find in good condition. Generally, some of these Portal Second Age cards are starting to go up this week a little more. But this one has been more popular recently in Commander 2 because of Mystic Sanctuary, which came out in Throne of Eldrain. If you can pull it off, you take this, the Sanctuary, Trade Roots, or Maloku, and you could lock up the game with endless turns. Cavern of Souls, this is the one from Ultimate Masters. It goes up $1.08 to sixty nine ninety five. This is a huge modern card. Amulet Titan, Eldrazi Tron, Humans, and more. Legacy and Vintage play as well, but of course, Commander Tribal decks love this card. Piracy from Portal Second Age again goes up $1.10 to eighteen ninety five. dollars So we talked about this card quite a bit last week. I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but basically, if you put this in your Commander deck, what you can do is clear the path if you're worried somebody has a counterspell. So you create a situation where they're kind of forced to tap their lands. But there's something else you can do with this, and the professor from Tolarian Community College in a video a week ago pointed out a combo. Between this, Storm Cauldron, Warp Devotion, pretty devious combo that brought more attention to the card and it has gone up since. Hezareth the Fervent goes up $1.12 to six sixty. dollars another card that sure is showing up in those Torbrand, Thane of Red Fell Commander decks. But again, this is probably moving more so because of Pioneer. You're going to find this in some of the Chromantic Core Flare decks as well as Mono Red Aggro and Burn there. Gate 2 Phyrexia, this is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.14 to $43.49, and this has been a little more popular recently in Commander because of a number of new cards, Carrick Son of Yawgmoth, plus some others that support Devotion to Black, Ayara First of Lockthwain, and Villas Broker of Blood. Power Artifact, also on the reserve list, goes up $1.15 to $144.99, classic combo enabler in Commander. This has been pushed recently because of cards like Urza and Mystic Forge. Expropriate goes up $1.19 to forty six eighty three. Fantastic blue commander card, and it did get a command zone mention this week on the podcast. So, yeah, that probably drew a little more attention back to it again. Supreme Verdict, Return to Ravnica goes up $1.20 to $8.99. Iconic Masters up $1.29 to $8.52. Again, we have a card here that is moving because of Pioneer. This is showing up in a lot of control builds there, as well as copycat combo. But it's also a huge commander card, so I did want to include it. Gaius Cradle on the reserve list. This is the one from Urza Saga because it did get reprinted as a judge promo in foil again before they closed that loophole on the reserve list. This goes up $1.47 to $348.91. Really not a huge increase considering the price tag here, but I did want to point it out because this card just keeps going up and up. This is a great commander card that did get a command zone mention this week too, so maybe that's part of the reason it's going up. Also a fantastic legacy card in Maverick and Elves. Winds of Change from Portal goes up $1.52 to $16.12. Again, I think partially this is just because these are harder to find in good condition. This does see a little legacy play. Recently, though, in Commander, maybe this is getting a little more of a push by cards like Bone Miser and Curse of Fool's Wisdom from Commander 2019. Ugin the Spirit Dragon up $1.55 to $56.03. When it comes to Modern, this sees play in Tron Builds, Legacy 12 Post, and yes, this is Pioneer Legal, already seeing play in things like Team or Marvel. But this is also a fantastic commander card that sees widespread play. Mana Crypt, great vintage card, also a great commander card. This is the one from Eternal Masters. It goes up $1.61 to 205 Again, percentage-wise, not a huge increase. But pay attention, this card just keeps going up. Scroll Rack from Tempest, huge commander card. This goes up $1.88 to sixty-two eighty-three this week. Trade Roots from Mercadia Masks, it goes up $1.91 to $4.85. So earlier we saw Temporal Manipulation, and I mentioned that you could combo that card with this as well as Mystic Sanctuary, or you could use Time Warp, or instead of this, you could use Moloku. That's actually a little better, but this is still a nice backup to have in those kind of decks in Commander. 
But because of that combo, this card has gotten hot this week, and it does show up in some of the newer commander decks too, like Chulain Teller of Tales, Yurok the Desecrated, Golos Tireless Pilgrim, and more. Wild Slash goes up $1.98 to 231, another huge percentage jump here, and another card I put on this list because yes, it is showing up in those Torbrand Thane of Red Fell decks. But again, this is moving probably more so because of Pioneer. Is it Phoenix, Copycat Builds, Burn, Mono Red Aggro, Is it Insult Artifact, Atarka Red, Mono Red Blitz, Boros Feather? The card has tons of Pioneer potential. Gideon Ally of Zendikar goes up $1.99 to $13.99 this week, and this card continues to be hot because there's a lot of cross interest here. This does see playing a fair amount of modern builds, Control Builds, Stoneblade Builds, Mardu Shadow, and more. Sees a little legacy play. And yes, Pioneer, Banned Spirits, some Knights builds, Orzhov Super Friends, Esper Control, and more there. And with Commander players trying to build around Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, there's a lot of Knights decks that want this in the Commander format as well. With all those different players looking for this card, keep an eye on it. It could go up some more before it stabilizes. Mana Confluence from Journey into Nyx, another great crossover card here, going up 207 to 2899. Sees a little modern play and a little legacy play and could definitely be a key part of some mana bases in Pioneer, especially anything running four or five colors. We've already seen it show up in Dredgeless Dredge, four-color copycat combo, Kethis combo, five-color Nimizit, four-color Vanifar, and of course, this is a very highly played commander card too. Ramin' Up Ruins. This goes up 219 to 299, another card that you'll find in those Tor brand Thane of Red Fell commander builds, but also a card you're going to find in other places. Little modern play, and no surprise, so far, a lot of Pioneer play. Burn builds, Mono Red Aggro builds, is it in Soul Artifact, is it Blitz and Boros Feather there? Razor Claw Bear from Portal Second Age, another card from that set jumping up, going up 421 to 5779 this week, and another card for those Bear Tribal decks in Commander. Angus McKenzie, this is on the reserve list, it goes up 637 to 195.25. Great Pillow 4 Commander card if you happen to have one. Okay, let's move on to the Pauper Spotlight. Now recently, with Arkham's Astrolabe being banned in the format, there are some changes in the meta. Because of that, we have a few cards moving up in value. Merchant Scroll, this is the one from Homelands. It goes up 10 cents this week to 426, part of Inside Out Combo and Pauper. Recently, it's seen a little more modern play too because of Twiddle Storm decks, and it does see some vintage play as well. Muddle the Mixture goes up 11 cents to 295. Sees a little bit of Pauper control play now. Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Theros going up 12 cents to 123. Commander 2014 up 12 cents to 144. So this is found in Pauper Mono Black Control Builds, but Pioneer is also interested in this. Mono Black Devotion and Mono Black Vampires have been using this so far. Chromatic Star from Time Spiral up 15 cents to 697. In Pauper, you'll find this in Affinity and Tron. In Modern, though, it's in some big decks too. Tron there, as well as Four Color and Simic or Zathopter Sword decks. Like I said, especially the Simic one has been very popular this week. It's in more decks there too. My assumption is this is moving more because of Modern. Deprive goes up 16 cents to $1.15. This is seeing playing Is It Control and Fairies builds, and also some Modern play too here or there. Freed from the Real for Masters 25 goes up 16 cents to 153. And every once in a while, this does show up in a Pauper deck trying to create infinite mana combos. Spell Stutter Sprite from Modern Masters goes up 16 cents to 257. This is an Is It Control as well as Fairies. Sees a little modern play too. Chainer's Edict, Ultimate Masters up 11 cents to 188. Torment up 16 cents to 312. And you're going to find this one in Mono Black Control. Or up Pestilence Builds and more. On to the premium spotlight. Like I say every week, I don't like to spend too much time on foils or rare promos because a lot of times you do find misleading data online. If you don't have a lot of copies of the card sold, it's hard to really pinpoint a true price point, and sometimes these prices can be manipulated too. But every week, I do try to find at least one card that is truly moving with the market. This week, I went with Thassa, God of the Sea. The foil from Theros is going up $6.69 to $40.09. All right, that does it for this week. Another huge episode, tons of things happening, obviously. And this will probably continue for a few more weeks at least until people start to figure out the Pioneer format. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.